worship today. We're so glad that you could join with us. The gospel for the third Sunday of Easter is always one in which the risen Christ shares food with the disciples, meals that are the Easter template for the meal that we share each Sunday in worship. In today's gospel, Jesus both shares the disciples' food and shows them the meaning of his suffering, death, and resurrection through the scriptures, the two main elements of our Sunday worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks now for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you, O Lord, for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
victory for our God. The Lamb who was slain has begun His reign. Hallelujah. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, blood set us free to be people of God. Our riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessings, and glory. Is the feast of victory for our God, the Lamb who was slain has begun His reign. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of our creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus went to see the disciples after he had been raised from the dead. They buzzed with excitement. Is that you, Jesus? We're so glad to see you. Do you want something to eat? Jesus smiled. Peace be with you, he said. I have some things to tell you. The disciples gathered close around Jesus, eager to listen to him. And he said, God has given me all the power in heaven and on earth. The disciples looked at each other and they began chattering again. Wow, that's wonderful. We knew it. What will you do first, Jesus? Wait, he said, there's more. The disciples listened carefully. Here's what I need you to do. Go everywhere in the world and teach people about me and remember, I will always be with you. And then Jesus returned to heaven. The happy disciples soon began the work that Jesus had told them to do. And again, what was that work? Go everywhere in the world and teach people about me, Jesus, and remember, I will always be with you. That's a good story. So I'm wondering this week, how could we do what Jesus asks us to do? We might not be able to go everywhere in the world, but we could tell people about Jesus and how Jesus is in our life and in our story. And we could always remember that God is with us. And where could God be with us? In our minds? as we think about him in our hearts, as we give thanks for him, or in our stories that we tell. I'd love to hear what you think. Have a good week. Amen. Our first reading is Psalm 4, which we will read responsively. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than one grain of wine abound. 
In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. Here ends the first reading. Thanks be to God. In this account of an appearance after his resurrection, Jesus opens the minds of the disciples to understand him as Messiah. Jesus convinces them that he has been raised and sends them on a mission to proclaim the message of repentance and forgiveness. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, verses 36b through 48. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do your doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he took it and he ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Years ago, near a house where we raised our children, we would go out early in the morning and walk the dogs on the nature trails at the Rhode Island Veterans Cemetery in Exeter, Rhode Island. Maybe you know that place. It's a place where there are people that we knew and loved, have been buried and dedicated into God's hands. Parents of friends and soldiers who had served with grace in war. So I often started my day by walking among the dead in a holy place of rest. I never saw a ghost. And never have I seen someone risen from the dead and fully alive. Yet. I say yet because anything and everything is possible with God. We see this most clearly in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the witnesses of the ancestors who saw them. Just when they thought that the story was over, God had something more to say. Now in my life, I live in a new place, and I still walk dogs, and I have new stories to tell. And as I walked on my dog walker route this week, I was thinking about today's gospel, and I was wondering, what would I do just in my ordinary day if I met up with a resurrected person on my walk, met up with something extraordinary as what happened to them then? It would seem so unbelievable to me in some ways, and in other ways, Christ-centered, so believable, so hoped for. It would definitely be one of those wow God moments that we have in our lives. Well, in today's text, the disciples are having their own holy wow moment. In Luke's gospel, Jesus appears to the disciples after his death. And the gospel says they are seaside and they are fishing when he appears to them. He asks them for some of the fish they caught and are cooking for breakfast the man who has been raised from the dead is hungry. But the disciples 
are bewildered by this, and justifiably so. They're frightened by what is happening. The recent events of his death, his empty tomb, his appearance to women and others around town, and now here, standing before them, fully human. Not a ghost, but a man eating fish on the beach with them. In the history of the early church, the ancestors were emphatic about this point, that he was raised. He was not an ethereal spirit still alive, bearing the marks of his wounds. He was fully alive. The witnesses in the following generations struggled to understand it just in the ways that we might too today, but they did not allow the limits of their understanding to limit the witness of what they had actually experienced. So what would you do? What would you do if Jesus came to you after his death and resurrection, not a ghost, but fully alive? This is not just any man who gently died in his sleep, but a man whose body was destroyed by a brutal death, and now is beachside, peace-filled, eating breakfast with them in a week after his death, and he reassures them that it is him, saying, peace be with you. The texts say that they were startled and terrified, of course, thinking that they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. For thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. Perhaps you wonder, like I do, why does he come and risk frightening them as he does? He comes to show to them that he is alive and that this is not a surprise that the dying, the rising was expected, anticipated, prophesied about, as God saves us despite a rejection by his own people. All of the events of his ministry, his death, his resurrection and power to save, all of these were predicted for centuries before he was born. So what does all of this mean to us today in 2021 in Gales Ferry, Connecticut? What it means to us is the same as what it meant to them, my friends, that God made a man called Jesus whose witness would let us all know that we are beloved by God and we may confess our faults and failings and confess them to God and be forgiven by God. Forgiveness not just for special people, but for all people, in all nations, all circumstances. And what were they supposed to do next? If we were in this story, what would we do now? He would do what Jesus asks. He said to them, you are the witnesses of these things. So go forth and share this message of love, of forgiveness, and the hope of God's presence with you, always. And they did this, didn't they? And so here we are today, receiving their message again and proclaiming it again, and sharing it with all who need to hear this. Believe then that everything is possible by God. And when we follow Jesus, 
He will surprise us, won't he? And he will bless us in ways that we cannot yet imagine. Alleluia. Christ is risen with you and with us. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is and seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism, for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call to you for your guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeheartedness. Prayers for healing, Lindsay, John, Tom, Sandy, Dale, Audrey, Holly, Dave, Norma, Bill, Bob, Julie, Stephen, Chip, Harry, Link, Terry, Glenn, Rayanne, Fred, Ethel, Stephanie, Charlotte, Pam, Patty, Ron, Ken, Gloria, Joe. Praying for those who are grieving, Linda, and the families and friends of Billy, Scott, Neb, and Lori. Pray for the deployed military, Evan, Andy, Chris, Derek, and Patrick. Pray for the homebound, Lynn, Lynn, and Ruth. Pray for those with other concerns, essential and healthcare workers, Saditha, Teddy, and Aaron, and the Chicken Buso Project. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Gracious God, we give thanks for those who have been appointed to serve on the call committee and entrusted with those with the work of discerning a new pastor to guide this congregation. Grant them wisdom, patience, and the direction of your Holy Spirit that they may exercise right judgment so to serve you and the mission of your people here. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of the peace you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with those who are with us today. Let's gather into our hearts and minds those who are not with us today, whom we love and send them peace from our hearts as well. And if we are alone, let us gather peace into our own hearts. Let us gather into our hearts and minds those with whom we have disagreement or discord and send them peace as well as Christ would have us do.
And let us gather into our hearts and minds around the peace that Christ sends to you now. Let us consider the gifts we have received from the generosity of God and generations of your people who have preserved your holy story and declared your power and grace, a promise of faithfulness and a will to follow the Holy Spirit with a vision emerging from our future in our community, gifts of collaboration in our ministries, a place for friends and strangers who have become friends to gather in peace, the gift of love blossoming across a season of tending, the grace of forgiveness in matters great and small, and the medicine of comfort among our loved ones. Guide us, O Holy Spirit, to teach others your ways. Let us consider how we may share these gifts that were bestowed upon us by God to tend wisely and to share generously in God's name. Thank you, our God, creator of all things, for creating us and blessing us with all that we need. Show us how our gifts may bless others. Show us how to be humble and grateful when another shares blessings with us. Amen. Let's share the Lord's Prayer together in the translation that you know best. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are still in a season of fasting from receiving Holy Communion due to safety restrictions. Yet we are still held fast with communion that we have already received and may prayerfully remember now. We remember when bread was broken and placed into our hands with care and wine gently brought to our lips. We remember the prayers of our hearts that we brought to our Savior's table, hoping that the blessing in the bread and the wine and the promise that could hold within us through a pandemic and our daily journey. Let us pray. Jesus, we remember you in the bread and in the wine and in our spirit, where you remain with us in all circumstances. Amen. As we prepare to go back out into the week ahead of us, may this blessing settle itself into your hearts and minds. May our glorious God grant us a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Mm -hmm.